In a previous video, we talked about the rate of convergence. Now let's talk about the rate of convergence for the bisection method. What I've provided at the top is the general definition of the rate of convergence. So remember that, that we have, in general, we have a sequence B sub n converging to zero, and we have another sequence A sub n converging to A. If there exists a positive constant such that we can get this condition to be true, for large n, then we say that A sub n converges to A with the rate of convergence big O of B sub n. And we can write that in this manner also. And typically, B sub n for us is going to be things of the form of 1 over n of p, where p is some positive integer. So let's just talk a little bit about the bisection method, and then we will try to figure out what the rate of convergence is. So remember with the bisection method, that we assume that we have some function f of x, which is continuous in the interval a, b. Okay, we're assuming that that f of a times f of b is less than zero, which simply means that the sign changes on the interval a, b. And then using the intermediate value theorem, we know automatically that there is some p in a b such that f of p is equal to zero. So it tells us is that there's some value of p in the interval a b where f of x is equal to zero. And this is called either a root of the equation or a solution to, or sorry, a root of the function f of x or um, a solution of the equation f of x equals zero. So remember how the bisection method works. We start off and we have an interval a, b, and we're going to denote a sub 1 with a and b sub 1 with b. So the reason I have the subscripts is because we're going to have a sequence of intervals where this is going to represent the left-hand side of the interval, and this is going to represent the right-hand side of the interval. Okay. So using these, what we're, do, we're going to do is we're going to bisect the interval a1 to b1. So we're going to bisect the interval a1, b1. And that will give us a p1, which is a1 plus b1 over 2. All right? So p1 is, is in the middle of, of the interval a1, b1. Okay. Now, P, which is the exact solution over here, is going to be somewhere on one side of the interval. So again, this is our interval here. Here's A1. Here's A, sorry, B1. And P is somewhere in here, right? P is somewhere in here, and this is going to be our P1. We know that at a minimum that the distance, or at a maximum, the distance between P1 and P is going to be this width right here. This width right here is 1 half times B1 minus A1. So what this tells me is that in general that the absolute value of P1 minus P is less than or equal to 1 half times, if you like, B1 minus A1. Right. So using this P1, then we construct another interval, which is going to be A2, B2. And again, we're going to get A2 and B2 based on the sign of right, F of P1 relative to F of A1 and B1. But in general, we're going to get an A2 and a B2. We're going to, again, we're going to do a bisection, but this time we're going to bisect A2, B2, and it give us a P2, which is A2 plus B2 over 2. Okay. 
Now, using the same argument here, what we can show is that the absolute value of P2 minus P is less than or equal to 1 half times B2 minus A2. But we know that B2 minus A2 is half of B1 minus A1. So what we can do is we can write this as 1, right, one half squared times B1 minus A1. Remember that this can be rewritten as 1 over 2 squared times B minus A because we made the identification over here that A1 is equal to A and B1 is equal to B. Now in general, what we know is that the absolute value of P sub N minus P is less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the N times B minus A. Again, we see that because the subscript here agrees with the power here, right? The subscript here agrees with the power there, if you like, you know, the um, the, the subscript here, which is a, which is a one. Okay. Now, if you look at this, what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that P sub n looking at our definition up here, right? It tells us that P sub n is converging to P, right? So A sub n is, is P sub n and A is P. So this tells me that P sub n is converging to P um, at big O of 1 over 2 to the n. The reason is because here, on the left-hand side, we have what we had up here, right? Right there. And so again, that we identify with this right here. And then we have K, which in this case is simply B minus A. And then we have B sub N, which is just saying that we have to have some function right here of N, which we have right here. So we see our B sub N is, actually B sub N, is 1 over 2 to the n, and k is b minus a. So another way to say this is that p sub n is equal to p plus big O of 1 over 2 to the n.